spoken to half of you already today. I'm from the National Lottery Community Fund and I'm going to spend a bit of time speaking about our two open rolling programmes. Um, I'll give you a brief overview of what they're about, how much you can apply for, all those sorts of things. And I'll also talk through what our key funding priorities are just to make sure you know you're hitting one of those if you do apply to us. I apologise, I've got two laptops because I forgot to print my notes. <coughs> So we have three key funding priorities across England and regardless of what programme you apply for, you have to hit at least one of these funding priorities. You can hit more than one if you like, but you have to hit one. So we've got bringing people together, building strong relationships in and across communities, improving the spaces and places that matter to communities and enabling people to fulfil their potential, working to address the problem at the earliest possible stage. Everything that we fund through Rewards for All has to hit one of these, and they're quite broad, I think. Um, the bringing people together and building stronger relationships, I would say, is the most common one that projects hit. Um, places and spaces, Whilst they can be physical places and spaces, a park, a community centre, a building, they can also be virtual. They can be groups of people, a safe space for a group of people to meet in or come together. Um, so it's not, it's not necessarily just the obvious. And then enabling people to fulfil their potential, that really does focus on early action supporting people before a crisis hits, enabling someone to be the best person that they can be and you can apply that to whatever project that you're working within. The other thing that we are really focused on um, is something that we call people in the lead and we feel really strongly that you involve the communities that you're working with, that they are leading, designing, informing, making decisions, delivering activities, planning, whatever it might be, but that the people that you're working to support are actually informing what you're doing, that it's not just one person in your organisation who thought, oh, that might be nice, let's get some money to do that. It needs to be tested. We want to know what's important to the communities, not what's wrong with them. We want to know what assets you're building on, not what you haven't got. Um, we really want to take that positive approach to building stronger communities and making people happier. There's lots of ways that you can do this and people often say to me, well, what's the best way? What should I do? And I don't know, because I don't know the people that you're working with, I don't know your communities, I don't know how they like to engage with you, I don't know how they like to talk to you or write things down. You know that because you work with them every day. Um, so you can do surveys, focus groups, um, project planning and design, forums. Um, you could have pilots, people could participate in activities to run sessions for the day. Um, you can have steering groups, separate project boards. It really is up to you to determine. And I'm sure you've probably got much more imaginative ideas than I listed there as well. This is key. If you can't demonstrate to us why this is important to your community, it probably won't get funded. So make sure the community are there from day dot when you're coming up with an idea. So I'm going to talk about Awards for All a little bit now, and this is our smaller grants programme. It makes awards of between £300 and £10,000. There is no closing day, it is rolling programme. You apply when you're ready. We allow organisations to apply up to £10,000 for this one, and the projects can last for up to 12 months. You can only have one live application or project running at any one time. So make sure that what you're applying for is the thing that you need. 
and that a few months later you're not going to want to apply for something else because you can only go through it once in that pro process. If you get a grant and it comes to an end, you can then apply for another one. If you get rejected, you can then apply again, but you can only ever have one in process. <coughs> and don't forget you have to hit one of those three funding priorities, bringing people and communities together, places and spaces, or early action, and you need to show people in the lead. So this is a point that I think the arts and heritage people have mentioned already. So I've had swathes of people coming to me after their presentations. We at the National Lottery Community Fund are interested in funding community projects. We will fund arts, heritage or sports activities provided the reason that they're being delivered is for a community purpose, for a community benefit. We won't fund arts for the benefit of arts. But we will fund an arts project if actually the real benefit is the improvement of mental health for middle-aged men, for instance. So don't feel like you can't come to us if there are other funders, but just make sure that community element is there. So the application for Awards for All is quite simple. Um, it's all online. The guidance is on our website along with the application form. It's um, a much improved application form. It's much shorter than it used to be a year or so ago. Um, so don't be put off if you did a really long paper application form a few years ago. It's a much smoother process now. Um, make sure that you fill in the whole application form. Make sure you read the guidance. And make sure you tell us how your project came about, why it's important, why you want it to be funded, and most importantly, tell us about the impact it's going to have. <coughs> What's going to change? What difference is it going to make? That's what we're really interested in. So this is how you can apply. Um, the application form is online, as I've said. If you aren't comfortable with applying online, you can get in touch with us for a paper version. If you're not comfortable with writing, if you haven't got very good written skills, get in touch with us because we can look at other ways. We can do phone call assessments. We can come out and visit you. It's not our common practice, but we want to make sure that we're as accessible as we can be. So don't feel like or oh, I, I don't do the internet so I can't apply. Just get in touch, speak to us. We're generally a pretty friendly bunch, so we'll do what we can to help you. And I'm gonna go on to reaching communities. It's a bit more of a fancy slide. Um, so reaching communities is where I spend most of my time. And reaching communities funds projects above £10,000. It's the same England priorities. Um, the two different approaches to reaching communities and awards for all are really key. So we don't have an application form for reaching communities. About a year ago, we relaunched the whole programme. And that was in response to feedback that we'd had from you guys, from the sector. Um, so now you will find teams of funding managers and funding officers who are based within six hubs across England. We are mobile workers, so we are not office based. We are based out in the community. We come and visit you, we chat to you on the phone, we help you through the process. Um, and that's why we got rid of the forms to try and make us a little bit more accessible and not hiding behind the paper. So our aim is that we'll be more informed because we're speaking to you, we're speaking to your communities, and we generally know a little bit more than someone who's sat in an office just looking at bits of paper. Um, so you can apply for funding of up, upwards of £10,000 for up to five years. And we don't set any deadlines, so you can apply to us when you're ready. Um, 
if we come to you with a lot of questions and you're not sure, you can say to us, well, give us a couple of months and we'll come back to you, that's fine. We'll hold off and we'll work at your pace. If you're ready to go, you've got all the answers, we'll carry on pushing it through the process. So we, we work to your time frames and we work to the development that you guys need rather than us setting false deadlines. So one of the hopes of scrapping the application form for reaching communities and being more local is that we wanted to be able to reach more grassroots communities. We wanted to be able to reach communities that maybe we haven't funded before, who maybe £10,000 isn't quite enough. Um, and that's why we lowered the, the amount that you could apply for from 50 to 10,000 pounds to try and reach people who haven't come to us before, fill that funding gap. Um, we're just coming up to our one year anniversary of this way of working. We might have just passed it now. I think I wrote this a few weeks ago. We're being told that we're more visible. We're being told that we're more accessible. But we know we haven't quite got it right yet. We've only been doing it for a year. We're still listening. We're still trying to tweak the process. So if you have got any feedback for us, let us know. If you think there are things that we could tweak, then we will try and tweak them as we go. Um, but yeah, do let us know and just come and speak to us. So as I said, there's no form. Um, if you want to get in touch with us, you can do it through the website. Um, it will take you to a page where there is a box and you put some information in that box and it will wing its way over to myself or one of the other um, people working across Coventry and Warwickshire. And we'll either pick up the phone and get in touch with you, arrange a meeting, drop you an email, we'll ask you some questions and we'll start the process from there. If you want to phone us, you can get in touch with our colleagues at the Midlands Hub or you can just drop us an email. Um, Kim and I, I think, have given our contact details out quite a lot today, so I imagine quite a few things will be coming direct to us. Um, and that's kind of how you apply for a Reaching Communities Fund. It's a much more simple process. The hope is that we can say no quicker if we're not going to fund you, and that saves you a lot of time and a lot of resource and that we'll be able to support you better if we think we might fund you and we do invite you to continue through the process but it'll be a much more supported and guided um, conversation.